Hello, everyone, and welcome. My name is Mitch Hall. Um, today, we're going to be talking about uh, centralized management of anti-malware uh, and anti-spam using Forefront Protection uh, Server Management Console. Uh, I'm a senior programmer with uh, Microsoft, and we've been working on this technology for a number of years now. Uh, this is the agenda. We're going to have an overview. That's basically to dis do a high-level uh, discussion of the products uh, that we would manage with the console. We're going to talk about the multi-node management options. There are two different options that we have. And we'll talk about the uh, management console itself, and I'll do some demos of that environment. And we'll also talk about the protection server script kit that we've developed, which is basically a series of PowerShell scripts that allow you to do uh, the management functionality through PowerShell. And then we'll have a summary, and then I'll wrap it up with uh, any questions you might have. So first, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, Forefront Protection 2010 for Exchange Server. So this is the anti-malware and anti-spam solution that's installed on top of Exchange, either Exchange uh, 2007 or Exchange 2010. It provides anti-malware and anti-spam uh, protection for your Exchange Server. It runs on the edge, it runs on the hub, and it also has uh, an installation that will run on the mailbox server. Uh, it was released back in November 2009, and the current update for that is our roll-up number two. We also have Forefront Protection for SharePoint. That's a any malware uh, and content filtering solution that is run on top of a SharePoint server that provides any malware and content filtering for documents uploaded to a SharePoint repository. That was released back in April 2010. And that's uh, currently we have roll-up number one released for that. Both of these products, the Forefront for Exchange and Forefront for SharePoint, have a standalone UI. What that means is for each of the deployments that you have, you need to manage the uh, settings individually. So we, we knew this was a gap uh, back when these products were released, so we've been working on the management console to pull uh, the management centrally into a web-based uh, uh, console to do the management. So that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about the, the management options you have for the uh, Exchange and SharePoint products. So the first uh, solution we're going to talk about is the management console. Uh, it's a multi-server management console. Uh, it's a free download available from Microsoft.com slash Forefront. Uh, and like I said, it was released back in December 2010. We also have the script kit, which is a series of PowerShell scripts, uh, which will allow you to do remote PowerShell management of, of your uh, Exchange and SharePoint servers. Uh, the script kit was written on uh, using remote PowerShell. The way uh, both of our products are worked, Forefront for Exchange and Forefront for SharePoint, the underlying management infrastructure is PowerShell. So even though you might manage those using the UI, underlying the UI is PowerShell. So all of our functionality is completely available through PowerShell. So the Forefront Management Console, we'll talk a little bit about the uh, capabilities. It provides simplified management. It does server discovery, so any of the uh, Forefront for Exchange or Forefront for SharePoint servers you have, uh, it'll be able to discover those. Uh, those are for the domain join machines, so we actually, uh, those products write a marker in the Active Directory, and that's looked up by the installation uh, during FS FPSMC's uh, discovery process. It actually looks up those servers in Active Directory. For those servers that you have that might not be running in a, in a domain, like your edges or your non-domain joined SharePoint servers, you can manage those. You will just have to put the fully qualified domain name in. Uh, it also is firewall friendly, so we use firewall friendly communication channels uh, that you can uh, put into your firewall. We also do signature redistribution for both the 32-bit and 64-bit versions of the engines. So now you can do a central uh, uh, pull down from the, the forefront internet site and have your engines distributed from a central point. It provides visibility and control. Um, it monitors for, for events and there's a dashboard that you can go look at the recent activity within your environment. 
It provides real-time and historical reporting, and we'll do a little bit of a demo of the reporting interface in a little while. Um, it's a web-based interface, like I said, so there's no uh, client uh, installation that's needed for that. FPSMC has an installation, but there's no client installation piece. Um, and it provides a central quarantine. So for your forefront for exchange and your forefront for SharePoint deployments, without the management console, you'd have to uh, manage the quarantine on the individual servers. With this product, you can actually pull down uh, the quarantines from those machines to the central repository and actually manage and release them from the central uh, quarantine. It's enterprise ready, uh, it's, it's scalable, it's built on top of SQL Server 2008 R2, uh, it, and it provides continuity for critical business functionality. Uh, it has the ability to manage Forefront for Exchange uh, in its clustered environments as well. Like I said, uh, it runs on Windows 2008 R2, uh, it supports Hyper-V, it uses WCF uh, for communications, uh, it's integrated with Active Directory, it runs on SQL Server 2008 uh, R2 Enterprise. It can also run uh, with SQL Express. So if you don't have SQL uh, Enterprise, we can do an Express installation and you can use that. Uh, today it supports IE8 and IE7. We're in the process right now of, of upgrading it to work with IE9. So this is just a little bit of an overview of what you need to do to manage uh, using the console. First, you need to add the servers to the management console and deploy an agent to these servers. The agent deployment is real easy and we'll, we'll go through a demo of that in, in a couple of moments. The second thing that you need to do is create what we call a policy and upload the policy into your FPSMC server. So if you go to one of your Exchange servers uh, and, and run uh, Forefront's export command, that'll create you an XML policy. You would take that policy, bring it over to your FPSMC machine and import it. And I'll actually show, I'll do a demo of this. Once you import that policy, then you'll be able to select the sections of that policy that you want to apply for this group of servers. So you can create one policy for your edges, you can create one policy for your transport, or you can create one global policy that you want to apply to all of the servers. Then you would actually take this policy, create a job, and run the job to deploy the policy to the servers or groups of servers that you've selected. You can use, uh, retrieve the quarantine remotely from these servers, and you can uh, also view statistics and reports from these servers. Uh, the data that we uh, store centrally is SQL Server, and we have remote access capabilities uh, th through our IIS implementation. We provide uh, the ability to ho have both an active and a passive uh, management console server so that you can have some redundancy there. Not all of the functionality is redundant. We just provide uh, redundancy for signature redistribution and some other critical functionality. So now we're going to talk about what it takes to install uh, FPSMC. It installs on Windows 2008 R2. We just spoke about the prerequisites are SQL 2008 Enterprise Edition or we can also run on the Express Edition. So if you don't have uh, the Enterprise Edition, we can install the Express uh, Edition. It requires EMS chart control for .NET, uh, and that must be installed separately by the admin. We'll provide a link to that. Most uh, servers already have that component, so that's not really a blocker of any type. And, and if, it, this, if it's not on the server already, we'll give you a link to download that. Uh, and we also integrate with IIS so that the server would need to have IIS turned on and .NET turned on as well. We have two deployment options. We have a standalone deployment option. Uh, this will install SQL Express by default. Uh, this supports both SQL Express and the Enterprise Edition. Uh, and if you install a standalone server, you can't later take that server uh, and make it part of an active passive installation. So our other option is the primary and secondary installation where you'd install your primary and then you'd install a secondary and you'd have the two uh, be able to back each other up. Yes? 
I'm sorry, I can't hear. Can you step up to the mic? Performance hit on SQL would be pretty light for this app. Is that right? It is. It's, it's not a very heavy app. It doesn't store a tremendous amount of data. Uh, we have some features that allow it to clean up uh, quarantine so you're not maintaining a heavy footprint. Uh, the access to the console, it's a web-based console. It's uh, basically the server name slash FPSMC console. Uh, if you want to use HTTPS with this, that's fine. You're just going to have to enable that separately uh, by the administ have the administrator enable that. Initial access to FPSMC is limited to the person that did the installation. Other people can be added, but they need to be some type of administrator. So uh, um, we can add additional people, but they need to have an administrative role. Uh, they need to be a local admin, domain admin, exchange admin, or enterprise admin. So we'll do a quick view of the new FPSMC homepage. Basically, we have sidebar navigation that provides uh, quick links to the functionality within the product. We have 24-hour at-a-glance snapshot. So everything contained within the homepage is a 24-hour snapshot of the latest activity. It provides statistics broken down by exchange and SharePoint. So the exchange information is up here, and then the SharePoint statistics are down here. Uh, it includes the top five viruses as well as the most active servers. And we have a breadcrumb trail up here. So you can see where you've navigated from. So server management. So as we spoke about before, you can manage all of your domain joined machines. You could also uh, manage the non-domain joined machines by entering the fully qualified domain name. We have the automatic discovery. Uh, so any of the new servers are displayed under our new servers tab. So that would, only, that would be for the servers that are domain joined. Any non-domain joined servers, you'd have to know the fully qualified domain name for that. And we have the ability to create groups and manage servers as groups. So you could create a group to manage all of your edges. You can create a group to manage all of your hubs. You could create a group to manage all of your uh, mailbox servers. And of course, the agent must be deployed to any of the servers that you want to manage. So we'll do a quick demo of the functionality we just spoke about. So if I flip over here. So um, this is a, a, an active FPSMC console. As you see here, we have the exchange spam statistics. We have our incidents, and we have our SharePoint incidents. Down here, we have our top five viruses, and these are all test viruses that we've been putting in. These are our servers. We have Madrid, which is our exchange server, as well as Seattle, which is our SharePoint server. Under user management, you can see here we have the installation user, and I've added this one user, Brian, but let me go ahead and add another user here. So it'll let you browse uh, for users within your domain. And that's how simple it is to add a new user to the system. As far as server management, here I have uh, two servers. And these currently have agents deployed to that. If I had another server that I wanted to add uh, to management, I'd click Add Servers, Find Now. And this server, Sydney, is not part of the service that's in our group today. OK. Now I've, I've, I've added it to management, and what I need to do is deploy the agent. So I'll click on Deploy Agent. I'll enter the uh, administrator account on Sydney in order to have the agent deployed. And that's it. Now the agent is in the process of being deployed. This server is not actively running, so the agent won't actually deploy. I just wanted to walk through the example. Uh, on the next tab, we're going to talk about our server management. So currently, when, when servers come in, uh, they're automatically assigned to the default group. So what I can do here is I can add a group. 
I'll call the group exchange. Let me spell it right. Okay, and then what I can do is highlight the group and I can assign servers to the group. So I'll take my exchange server and I'll assign it to this group. As you'll see later, now I'll be able to deploy policies to my exchange group uh, separately from my default group. You also have the ability to do some other actions, move servers to groups, remove groups, uh, and rename groups as well. Our global configuration options. So this is some of the information that the, the FPSMC console needs in order to um, um, provide its functionality. Uh, to do notifications, it needs the address of your SMTP server uh, and, and authentication information if that's required. Here's some um, quarantine and statistics settings. So we have polling intervals, we have purging, uh, so this provides uh, uh, the, the small database profile we were talking about earlier and the maximum number of records. Um, typically, we don't administer spam quarantine, so that's turned off by default, uh, and we just enable the regular quarantining for uh, malware. And this is where the engines are downloaded from, uh, the, the Microsoft site, Forefront site. If you had proxy or port information that you needed to configure, this would be the place you'd do it. This has some minimal integration with our FOPI, which is our forefront online protection for exchange. Uh, here, we just give you the ability to link up to your, your FOPI site and, and do some management through there. This isn't real active management through the FPSMC console. It just provides you an easier way to get up to your, your FOPI site in order to do the management. Any questions? Okay, now we'll talk a little bit about our centralized quarantine. It has a configuration to uh, a retrieval uh, polling interval, so you can configure the polling interval that it uses uh, in order to pull information uh, from the remote servers. It defaults to five days, and it does polling every 15 minutes. It's broken out by Exchange and SharePoint. It has four types of jobs. It has a deployment job, signature redistribution job, schedule report job, as well as a product activation job. The deployment job is where you would deploy your policies. So that's where you would do your active management of the settings for your forefront for Exchange machines or your forefront for SharePoint machines. It has the re signature redistribution job, which allows you to pull signatures from our central uh, forefront, direct, uh, forefront internet site and allow you to have those distributed uh, to your servers inside your network. Uh, that helps reduce bandwidth and, and other uh, things there. Uh, you have a schedule report job, so you have the ability to s provide uh, emailing of schedule reports on a daily basis if you like. And it has the ability to do product activation. So if you have, let's say, 50 exchange servers that are all expiring, uh, you could actually push your, your activations out to those uh, servers through a job. Jobs can either be scheduled or run on demand. And they can be scoped uh, so that you can set them to a, a group of servers or to all servers. So I'll do a quick demo of that. So here we have our exchange. So in this case, what I've done is I've retrieved uh, all the quarantine from our server called Madrid. That's our exchange server. Oh, sorry. Thank you. OK, so uh, here we have our Exchange server. Uh, what I've done is I've retrieved the quarantine uh, from our server Madrid. This 
gives you a listing of the detection times, the server name, so if I've pulled quarantine back from more than one server, uh, the sender name, this is the person that sent the email, as well as the recipients. A little bit about the email, here's the subject. Uh, the incident name, what type of detection was made here? Is this spam? Is this uh, a virus? Well, you know. So in this case, these were uh, filtering detections. And I believe that we have, I don't have any instances here. This would also show the AV detections as well. Uh, the incident category, which is whether it's a filter or whether it's a virus. Uh, and here would be the delivery time. So in this particular case, if I've decided that this piece of email should be delivered, I have the ability to deliver it. Uh, basically what the, this console does is it'll take the information that you've keyed in, it'll reach out to the forefront server that the detection was made on, and it actually gets released from the forefront uh, for, for exchange server directly. So you could deliver it to the list of original recipients, or you can send it to someone new. Uh, it also has the ability to add filtering. So if you wanted to choose uh, the date of the particular uh, quarantine that you're looking for, and it has the ability to do uh, some filtering by sender name, recipient name, and incident name. You can either do all of your exchange servers or you can select individual exchange servers. And you can also look at the different categories of detections that were made on the server. You have similar functionality within your SharePoint quarantine. Here we have detection time, server name, username, uh, the path that the file was being uploaded to, the incident name as well as the category. In the case of SharePoint, since it's not an email system, uh, you have the ability to uh, restore it to the original location in the SharePoint server. So if, if your user was downloading a document and that document hit a filter and it was quarantined, this would actually take that document and put it back to its original location within the SharePoint server. In this section, we're talking about the jobs. So in, hold on, let me flip back here for a second. Okay. So here I'm gonna create a package. There. Are in order to create a package, you come in and create package, and then you would need to point it to an XML file. These, as I spoke about before, this would be an XML file that you created by walking over to your Exchange server, running our PowerShell export command, taking that policy and moving it into your FPSMC server. This creates us a template of settings that you'll be able to use for distribution to your other Exchange servers. So here I've created an, uh, a policy, I've exported this from an exchange server, and now I open it, and I create the policy. And what you see here is I have a bunch of different sections that I can select. So in this case, what I've done is I've selected everything, but here we have anti-malware settings, we have filtering settings, global settings, incident settings, quarantine, notification, anti-spam. So what this allows you to do is create a custom policy for, let's say, your edge servers. So let's say in the case of your edge servers, you only care about anti-malware and spam settings. So you could have those settings centrally managed, and then you could have your other settings individually managed on those servers. If we're talking about your hubs, maybe you're not doing spam filtering on your hub, which would be typical. So you could take your spam settings off and allow those to be just on your edges, and then you can just manage your filter settings within, within your hubs. So it allows you to create custom policies that you could have deployed for, for your different groups of servers. Uh, over here, you have the ability to define your proxy and UNC share names. Since my Exchange server didn't use proxy, that's why this section is, is left blank here. But if you were using a proxy or in, in your environment, you could 
you could actually push the proxy settings that Forefront uses by using this section here. Uh, same is true for the FAPI credentials. So if you wanted to administer your FAPI credentials through here, uh, so that in the other section that we showed where you have the online protection, you can actually manage those settings through here. Any questions? Okay. So here, now what I've done is I've gone ahead and I created my TechEd package. Now what I need to do is take that package and deploy it to the service that I want to deploy it to. So here I'll come under jobs and I'll create a deployment job. Uh, first thing you need to do is name it. And now I select the package that I want to di distribute. So I'm going to create the, use the TechEd package that I just created. I could either run this now or I can schedule it. So if I schedule it, it lets me select when I want to schedule it. But I'm going to run this one now. If I wanted to send any email notifications, this is where I'd enter the, their address. And this tells me, this allows me to apply it to a particular group that I'm interested in. In this case, I just want to deploy it to my Exchange servers. Click Finish. And then I could select the job and click Run Now. And that's it. And then you can go under here into your notification logs uh, and and after the job, it'll take a few minutes, but after the job runs, you'll see the status of that job here. Uh, we also have signature redistribution jobs. So this is what I talked about before, where you can use uh, FP SMC console to distribute signatures for all of the service within your environment. You can come in here, create the job, and it's very similar to uh, the other job that we just created. And it allows you to select the individual engines that you want to redistribute. So if you're not using spam, you don't need to send the CloudMark updates. CloudMark is our content filtering engine within uh, the Forefront for Exchange product. So it allows you to custom select which engines you want to be updated. If you only use certain engines, you only need to update those. And by uh, allowing you to select it, you can reduce your network bandwidth by only selecting engines that you really require. Select all. And then this will allow you to target the servers that you want to send these signature updates to. I'll send them to my Exchange server. And that's it. Next is schedule report job. So the schedule report job will make a little more sense after we talk about the individual reports but it allows you to create a schedule to have a number of reports sent out automatically. So in this case, I want to schedule the report. and allows you to select how often you want the report to run, what servers you want, uh, what groups of, what types of servers you want the reports to run for, how often you want them to run, and then it allows you to select the groups of servers. And that's it. Product activation job is where you have the ability to send out the uh, forefront licenses for the individual servers. So you'd enter your license key here. Uh, your license number. And then the expiration date.
okay? And then you can actually go ahead and run this. And what's, I'm not going to do this, but this will actually push out the licenses to all of the servers. What used to happen, if you're not using this console, you actually have to do the activation at each of the individual servers. We'll do, um, we, we have a pretty good reporting interface here. We have a new servers report, uh, incident detections report, spam detection report, uh, and engine and file versions reports. These reports can either be run on demand or you can schedule to have them delivered via email. So let's jump back over to here and look at reports for a minute. So here we're looking at our incident detection report. Uh, we'll look at our incident detections for exchange. Look at the interval. Back this up a little bit. And we'll select our exchange servers. And what this gives you is an incident report over that time frame. So here you can see that we have 41% malware detected and 20, uh, uh, and the rest here, 16%, oh wait, no, this is the total number of detections, and 16 total uh, keyword filter detections. For our spam detection report is similar. Here you can see that we have uh, a number that we're hitting in our connection filtering, uh, SMT fil filtering, as well as our content filtering. We also have backscattering and uh, quarantine content filtering as well. You can look at our engine uh, and definition versions. So here what we do is we actually reach out to the servers and pull back the engine signature versions. Uh, so for our Madrid server, you can see that the last updates were made on 5.18. Last time it was checked, and the last time it was updated was back on 4.12. And the reason for that is these are virtual servers that we don't have connected to the Internet. Any questions? Um, so, FPSMC is our new version of our console, which is designed to manage our forefront protection for Exchange 2010 and our forefront uh, protection for SharePoint 2010. This is 64-bit, uh, so it supports our 64-bit versions of our, our 2010 products. It doesn't support down-level versions of our FPE or FPSP uh, deployments. So if you need to manage both 2010 and our previous versions of the products, you'd need two instances. You'd need a FPSMC installation as well as our older FSSMC installation. So uh, you'd need both of them, and they can't be deployed to the same server. So if you had a mixed environment, you'd actually have to have uh, two similar installations. Next, we're going to, so any questions about FPSMC, the management console? Yes? I can't, I can't hear you. Uh, so I didn't want to interrupt you. I have a few questions. So, so, so this is, you know, exchange in, in Forefront, but there's Forefront for OCS, there's Forefront for Windows Server. Are all those ever going to be integrated in here? Um, not in this console. This console is for the server protection pieces. Okay, so Windows Server is not included. Correct. Well, so, and uh, the, the forefront client security has its own management infrastructure with SCCM. Okay, so, um, and this is the same version that controls uh, your edge configuration, right? 
Correct. You can control any forefront uh, protection for Exchange 2010 version with this. Okay. So in terms of configuration, are there, is there any granularity to access control? I.e., can I have an administrator and can I have a, a user that can just add, add clients but not define policy? No. No. So it's, it's all, uh, all inclusive. Can you customize the notifications to the users if they get a virus? I believe so. I'd have to check on that, but I believe you can. The, well, the notifications, the notifications for the user when they receive a virus is done through FPE, and that can be customized. So this doesn't actually do the notifications for the, uh, you're not managing the notifications for your FPE here. You could manage those on, on your Exchange server. Okay, so, so suppose I've, a bunch of stuff comes in, new definitions come out, and I've got a whole bunch of mail sitting in my OST that is got a bunch of malware in it. What's going to happen? When, is there background filtering that goes on on the Exchange server, and how will that impact the, the user? Is that all going to be? Um, uh, explain that again. I'm not sure so, I understand. So, I, so a bunch of malware came out. There weren't any definitions for it. It's sitting in the store. And, and I've got a bunch of mail in my mailbox in my OST with all this malware sitting in right. it. Right. How's that going to get handled? So for forefront protection for Exchange, you have the ability to run background scanning jobs. FPSMC doesn't go and automatically rescan your stores, but within FPE, you can set up background scan jobs to periodically scan your Exchange store. So that would take account with the new definitions. And the same is true for FPSP. For your SharePoint store, you can schedule a job to run on a weekly or monthly basis to rip through your whole store and, and do a scan. Okay. And, and I have two more quick questions. I know I'm kind of taking a lot of time. That's fine. Um, can you push version updates? You, no. So if you're talking about patches or our roll-ups, no. This is not a patch management solution. I know the previous version of the product actually had the ability to push patches. This version does not. I don't know if anybody else would like to see this. I'd like to see some of the stuff you can actually set up in your policies and that sort of stuff. And that's my last question. So I, I, I think I went through that. Um, let me jump back over to here. So the stuff that you can set up is all, all listed under these packages. So if I edit this package, these are basically the things that you can set up. Now, if you want to look at the individual settings for what is in anti-malware, that would be looked up on your Exchange server. So what you would do is you'd go to your Exchange server, your FPE on your Exchange server, and set that up, set that one server up how you want it to be. Set the anti-malware settings up the way you want it to be deployed to other machines. After you're done setting it up, you do an export of that machine, and that creates the XML policy, which you'd bring over here to FPSMC. You'd import that policy, and then this allows you to select the individual sections of that policy that will be deployed. So this doesn't actually give you the ability to go in and change your real-time scan jobs and your, your scheduled scan jobs here. This just gives you the ability to push out uh, uh, an image of what you want your scanning to look like. Okay. Any other questions on uh, the management console? Next, I'm going to move on just to do a, uh, a quick discussion about the script kit. Yes. The product allows you to set a, a SMTP address and a server where you can deliver reports, but it doesn't allow you to do that over TLS. So you can set authentication credentials and addresses, but you, you can't do that over an encrypted connection. Is there any plans to add that in so that functionality can be used by those of us who don't permit unencrypted authenticated connections? Um, I, I don't ha we don't have that on our roadmap currently, but I could certainly add that as a suggestion. Any other questions? OK. So we'll do a, a quick discussion about our script kit. As I mentioned before, both FPE and FPSP, their management infrastructure is built completely on top of PowerShell. 
So what the, the single node UIs actually do is they collect the information from, from the person using the console and actually pushes everything through our PowerShell interface. So that gives us complete control of the product through PowerShell. So what we've done is we've actually built a script kit on top of that. So what it, it's, uh, it's a, provides some management, but actually more than that, it provides you the ability to start managing uh, based on a template that we provide. So you can take a look at the scripts. We actually provide the scripts themselves so that you can go in and see how to manage the individual pieces of, of the forefront uh, technologies. Uh, like I said, it's 100% PowerShell. It uses remoting, um, and it uh, uses the PowerShell commands that we already have in place. And it complements the FPSMC functionality. Uh, so, s what the script kit allows you to do is compare uh, server configuration files, so you can actually compare one server to another to see uh, if, if it has its updates. You can discover new servers and allows you to import and export configurations. So if you didn't want to use FPSMC and you wanted to do everything through PowerShell, this gives you the capabilities of doing that. It also allows you to run, I'll call them reports, it's kind of loose, it's, it's uh, PowerShell reports. So it gives you the information, but it's not formatted in terms of, uh, you know, a nice HTML report or something like that. So let me just jump back over here and show you the script kit. The script kit is also a free download. If you go to microsoft.com slash forefront, uh, it is actually a free download that you can get from there. So if you see here, I've actually downloaded the script kit and installed it on this machine. It is actually a series of PowerShell commands. So here is the, the main uh, PowerShell com uh, commandlet, and it actually uses these other commandlets as, as supporting functions. Here it has uh, the common uh, libraries. Uh, it also, here's the uh, compare. So if we actually open this up uh, and you are a PowerShell programmer, you can actually go in here, look at this. You can make changes to it, edit it, uh, and, and modify it for your needs. So it's complete PowerShell here. So if we go down, jump down, and open up our PowerShell window, I'm actually in the directory that we just spoke about. So here, here's everything uh, right there. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to run the PowerShell uh, command to discover the servers in my domain. So this actually went out to Active Directory and queried for all of the forefront servers that exist in the domain. And here you see we have Sydney, Seattle, and Madrid. Madrid is our exchange server. Uh, Seattle is our SharePoint server. And we have another uh, SharePoint server called Sydney. It tells you the versions of the product that are running there. So it actually went out and read the registry for that. Uh, the next command I wanted to show you uh, is the report command. So this is a remote PowerShell command that's going to go out to our server Madrid and actually run a remote PowerShell command on that server, pull the results back, and display them here on the screen. So here you can see what we have. We have the listing of the machine, the operating system and product version that's running. We have our health status. So it gives you the health status of the individual indicators that we have. So all engines have been updated is in red. So that, as I spoke to you before, this server is not internet connected, so it hasn't received its updates in a while. And it also, its spam definitions are not up to date. So the um, CloudMark, any uh, spam engine that we run, also requires micro updates. And those are, have not been updated on this machine uh, due to the internet connectivity as well. It also gives you a report of the malware detections, as well as a cumulative report. So if I had multiple servers here, 
uh, you'd actually see that the, it, this would be a summary of uh, the malwares on all of the servers. Same with the span. It gives you the incidents in the last 24 hours, uh, as well as the virus incident. So, quarantine, and also gives you a statistics of the engines uh, that have been updated. Any questions about the script kit? How many folks use PowerShell? Does, does the script kit sound like something that's interesting to you? Okay, so like I said, you can go to microsoft.com slash forefront, you can download the script kit, you can modify it and do whatever you want with it. Um, so just to, to wrap this up, um, the summary is uh, the Forefront Management Console provides protection for all of your FP and FPSP deployments. It gives you the ability to manage uh, servers, either as groups or individual servers. It has a centralized quarantine uh, and has the ability to run reports, uh, both scheduled and on-demand reports. It's available as a free download. Uh, so if you have FPE machines, you want to start managing, you go ahead and download that for free. We also have the script kit that uh, provides a complete scripting management solution. It gives you a base set of scripts that you can expand upon to meet your needs. Uh, the script kit is just a touch of what you can manage within Forefront. Uh, all of the Forefront commands can be found in the Forefront snap-in. So if you're on an FPE machine or you're on an FPSP machine, you can go into PowerShell and just run a get command uh, and, and list out all the Forefront commands. Uh, we have full PowerShell help uh, within the documentation for FPE and FPSP. So anything that you see in the UI, you could manage remotely through PowerShell. Uh, so that wraps up this session. I'm, I'm, I'm going to stay uh, to take additional questions. We have an additional session uh, on forefront end-to-end uh, -end protection for information workers coming up, coming up on Thursday evening at 4.30. Uh, we also have another session of forefront protection online, uh, which is coming up uh, at uh, 4.30. So does anybody have any questions about either FPSMC uh, or we can speak about FPE or uh, FPS? Uh, P as well. No questions? All right, well, thank you, everybody. Uh, I hope this was helpful and informative. Uh, here are some resources that we have. And don't forget to fill out your surveys.